glasses, paper towel, and the water. Like, what are the possible things that are also relevant to biology that we might be learning? Because this pretty much seems like a chemistry experiment, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But it is highly relevant to biology. Okay. Can you tell me why? Okay. I'll give you a hint. We are basically going to learn about few properties of water. Now, can you tell me how does this experiment become relevant to biology? How it functions around the world. Sorry? How it functions in our world. Yeah, the functions, most of the chemical reactions that happen in our cells, our bodies are mostly water. The cells contain, like, the, space, the cytoplasm is basically a watery solution, right? So, and same goes with plants, right? All organisms, all cells, their reactions are mediated in a watery or aqueous medium. So, it becomes necessary to understand the properties of water. So, we so will be trying to understand two very crucial properties of water, okay? And we'll see how it relates to biology. So, I'm going to start a very simple experiment. Uh, I'll not tell you what those properties are. We will uh, write about those properties in there. But initially, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pour this water into this. Okay. And then, I'm going to pour some, I'm going to pour some food color into it. Mainly for the sake of color. And what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to again put some water into it. It's a properly colored water now, isn't it? Right? Now, what is this? This, this is a tissue paper or a paper towel, right? Yeah. And what is it made of? What, what are paper towels made of? Yeah, uh, they come from trees. But what's the main, uh, you know, molecule that makes up the paper towel and gives it a property of absorbency, like absorbing water? The leaf. Sorry? The leaf. The leaf. Exactly. Which molecules in the leaf do you think might be imparting that absorbent property to paper towels? Cellulose. Okay, so it's basically made of mostly it's cellulose fibers. Okay. So what we are going to do now is, we are going to dip the paper towel with one end here and the other end here, okay? Got it? Okay. Now, we are going to leave the setup like this. Okay. Now, we will observe it for one hour, okay? You can already see that the water has started to climb. I'm very sorry that there are these various things. Uh, it should be completely white so that you are able to see it better. But we are expecting that the water from here will actually travel to this glass. Okay? And then, uh, if the experiment is successful, I'll tell you about the two properties of water that make this thing possible. And then we'll be discussing about the biological relevance of those properties. Okay, okay folks. This is the setup that we have arrived at. This is the situation we are in after three hours. Okay, we can actually see some of the water has moved from this glass to this glass through the paper towel. Okay, it took three hours for the water to move, but it actually moved. Okay, now what were the forces? Because you see, gravity was obviously opposing the movement of water from this glass to this glass. There must be some force acting against gravity that pulled the water from this glass and then put it here, right? At least pulling it this bit required force against gravity, right? So what is that force? Okay. What is that force and how does that force relate to our biological functions? Okay. So actually there are two forces at play here. And they are called cohesion and adhesion. Both of these forces are strongly at play when it comes to water molecules because the structure of water, when you look at it, okay, it has H, O, and H, right? The O is slightly negatively charged and the H is slightly positively charged, right? So when there are too many water molecules, the slightly negatively charged oxygen attracts the slightly positively charged hydrogen of the other water molecules. As a result, water tends to stay together. Okay, you might have wondered 
like when you switch on a tap, water comes from it. Okay, but unlike perfume, which is locked in the form of a liquid in a bottle, but when you press it, press the nozzle and it comes out, it simply spreads, right? Water doesn't spread as it comes out of the nozzle of the tap. Instead, for a very long time, it stays as one streamline, right? Okay. The reason is the hydrogen bonds that hold the water molecules together. Even if I were to put pour some water molecule like uh, a little water, like say for example 12 or 15 drops in one place around this table, the water will not spread flat, it will instead form a sort of a plateau, which will only be a few millimeters in height, but that indicates that water tends to stay together. So the nature of the molecules of water to stay together is called cohesion. Okay? And then water not only so, and the reason behind cohesion is hydrogen bonds, okay? So, water can form hydrogen bonds with its own molecules, but it can also form hydrogen bonds with other molecules that have oxygen atom or nitrogen atom in them. Got it? One of the examples is the paper towel. It is made of cellulose fibers. Cellulose fibers have lots of oxygen atoms that have slightly negative charge on them. So, the cellulose fibers the cellulose molecules, the oxygen atoms there, they attract the water molecule. Okay? And so this, the cellulose molecules which make up this paper towel have attracted the water molecules and water molecules actually traveled because of that attraction and it actually came in here. Okay? Now there are also many pores in the paper towel, so it forms a sort of capillary. Okay? So there are many, many small capillaries all the way from here till here. That have formed and water has traveled through these capillaries from this glass to this glass. And this is what we call capillary action. And two forces responsible for this are cohesion and adhesion. Uh, so, what is the biological significance of this? There are, there are multiple uh, you know, uh, uh, processes that require cohesion and adhesion of water. But one of the very key process is the movement of water from the roots to the top of the plant. Okay? In, or, or a tree. In a tree, uh, I generally believe that water is pushed from the bottom. But that isn't the case. Instead, it's pulled from the top. So, in the case of a tree, in the case of a tree, what happens is, Try to draw a tree. Okay. In the case of a tree, the roots are at the bottom, right? Here in this region, right? And there is a tube like thing. Now, these are schematic diagrams, not detailed diagrams. There's a tube like thing called the xylem, okay, which basically transports water to the top. Okay. Now, the xylem is like a tube. And the inner walls of the xylem are made of have a lot of cellulose fibers and other molecules that can form hydrogen bond with water. Got it? And at the top of the tree, from the leaves, say for example, here is a leaf. Okay. So from these leaves, you have, and I'm gonna pick water molecules through this particular. So you have water molecules actually going in the atmosphere, right? So this tube is actually continuous till the point of the leaf, although I'm not showing it here, okay? And water is evaporating in the atmosphere. So on the surface, the water molecules which are evaporating, they pull the water molecule which is beneath, which pulls the water molecule which is beneath it, which pulls the water molecule which is beneath it, all the way till the water, got it? Thus, water is actually pulled from the top in a tree. Okay, so how does cohesion and adhesion help in this transport? Because of cohesion, water remains as a continuous column. Okay, it doesn't break. Because if it breaks, if, if say for example there is a break like this here, okay, then the pulling force of transpiration will stop at this point and will not be transmitted to this point. Got it? So that's how cohesion is helpful. How is adhesion helpful? Adhesion is helpful because the water remains attracted to the walls of the cycle. So it doesn't sort of fall down the column. Okay? 
So this is how adhesion is helpful. So we basically tried to understand cohesion and adhesion of water molecules. We saw an activity and we saw its biological significance. And I hope that was helpful. Okay guys? Thank you.